Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray all is well, everybody's doing good. Excited for the new year, excited for what's happening, excited to see God do some great things. Blessed and highly favored, yes I am. We're just going to hang tight. God bless Brother Reggie. There he is. Been a long time. God is good. God is good. I just got something heavy on my spirit for just a few quick moments. I want to put this into you. Yes, God bless for 2016. I want to drop this into your spirit. Speak. Okay. Amen. I'm 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 blessed and highly favored. Bless everybody that's joining. First Kings in the 18th chapter says something that I think is vitally important. And I've shared it before, but it's been heavy on my spirit for most of the morning. And I want to share with you. That's great. God bless you. I'm glad it's going good. Hallelujah. Keep striving. Keep striving. The Bible said in the 18th chapter of 1 Kings that, look at verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him and he repaired. Think about this. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. I want you to focus on the word repaired and broken down. We are in a society. We are in a dispensation. We are in an age. We are in a time period of life where the altars have been broken down. We are based solely upon excitement. We are a nation that is based upon motivational speaking. We are a nation that is geared upon the hoop, the holler, the shout, the scream, the dance. The more emotions, the better we are. And the altars in the lives, not a physical altar that we would put up in the church, but an altar in the heart of men and women across this land has been broken down. It's been done away with. There's no fellowship. There's no communion with God anymore. We don't understand, first of all, the body of Christ. We don't understand that, you know, we're, we're so geared with everything that we we've lost the fact that David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor God's seed begging bread. We've lost the fact and the concept that 40 years, even though they murmured and they, they complained, God preserved and kept and fed the nation of Israel. 40 years. He goes on in verse 31 and he said, And Elijah took 12 stones. 12 is the number of God's government. A stone, the Bible said, is as a precious gift. Think about this. The, according, he said, took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. Unto whom the word of the Lord came saying, now I want you to hear this. I want you to hear what I've got to say to you today. If nothing else, if Jesus was to call Dr. Michael Smith home this afternoon and you would never hear from me again, you remember this statement. That Elijah took 12 stones. He took the number of government. 
And the Bible said the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. What Elijah was prophetically decreeing to you and to I is the simple fact that we are entering into a generational period. We are entering into a dispensation, my friend, when God is changing the nature of the church. God is changing the procreative ability powers of the house of God. No longer will we be governed by a hoop and a holler, a shout, a scream, a dance, a run, but we will be governed by Israel, the name of God, King of kings and Lord of lords. No longer will, will it just be a shout, but God will impregnate his revelation, His word, His knowledge, His power. And we will be what God has destined us to be. A church with power. A church with, with anointing. A, a church with glory. And we will not be complacent with the hoop and the holler. But the Bible said the first altar in us that Elijah repaired. 31 said, 32, or 31 said, Israel shall be thy name. He's speaking to us prophetically. And he's saying that Israel shall be thy nature, thy characteristics. See, Israel is the nation, is God's select chosen. Israel is God's nation, God's land. And I'm telling you what, I may live in southern Colorado, my friend, but Israel is my name. And anybody, Isaiah 54, 17 said, No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn. Why? Because Israel is my name. My nature has been changed. My character has been altered. My procreating power has been changed. And I will now birth the power of the Word of God. He said, and with the stones, he built the first altar he repaired. Look at 30. And he repaired the altar of the Lord. So the altar, the first altar was a representative of the Lord. Oh, come on now. In other words, he repaired fellowship. He repaired communion. He repaired the, the intimacy between Israel and him. My God. My God. For that altar was broken down. It's been abolished. It's been broken because of a religious spirit. We want more. We want somebody to excite us, somebody to give us a little hoop and a holler, a jump and a dance and a jig and a, and a, and a wiggle and a holler. And that's all we want. Don't make me accountable, Dr. Smith. Don't make me responsible for the revelation knowledge of a sovereign God. Don't make me accountable. But the Bible said, my, by my stripes, ye were healed, but people are walking walking around sick, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, because there's no solidified foundational word in the body of Christ. We got motivation. We got shout. We got dance. We got a holler. But we don't have strong word. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away the childish things. The Bible said, not laying again the foundation of repentance. Let us go on. We've been laying the same foundation over and over and over and over. I'm telling you what, repentance is one thing, but you need, when you repent, you need to change the direction of your life. Your appetites will change. Your vision will change. Your hearing perception will change. Everything about you will change through the act of repentance. 
I used to tell my children when they were little and they would say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I said, if you were sorry, you wouldn't keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. The church today is sorry, but there's no repentance. We keep laying the same foundation over and over and over and over again because we're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Look at verse 32. And with the stones he built an altar. Number two. With the stones he built an altar in the name. He built an altar where? In the name. Somebody says, I, I, I don't buy that, Dr. Smith. I, 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 just, I, just, I just don't buy that. I don't understand that. if I can find the scripture I'm looking for. Zechariah 10 and 12 says, and I will strengthen them. The word strengthen in the Hebrew means sanction them or confirm them. God is looking for a man and a woman that will be confirmed. You know what? I understand that, you know what? We, people are used to the motivation. They're used to the enthusiasm. They're used to the excitement. But there's no solidified walk. There's no foundation in their relationship with God. And God wants intimacy with you. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not just knowing who he is or, or what he is, but being intimate with him. Being intimate with him. Having a a, a relationship, a marriage with him. But, you know, God told Moses, he said, take off your shoes for the ground you're standing upon is holy ground. In the Hebrew, the phrase, take off your shoes is translated and it means you're willing to put your shoes in, under my bed, but you won't marry me. In other words, you want to sleep with me, but you won't marry me. We want to have an affair with God, and God is tired of affairs. Let me say that again. We want to have an affair with God, but God is sick and tired of affairs. God wants a relation. He wants to be married to his people. Come hell or high water, God wants a relationship. I'm married to my wife, and you know what? When we're broke, I'm still married. I still love her. When we're, we got money, I still love her. She's my wife. She, I've devoted my life to her, and I've devoted my life to God, to the ministry, and I'm married to him. Come good or bad, I'm married to him for better, for worse, and richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, till death us do part. I'm married to God. I'm married to the master, the king of kings and lord of lords. And nothing by no means can separate me from the love of God. I have more than a physical sexual attraction with God. And it's important. He said, and I will strengthen them in the, in the Lord. And they shall walk up and down. In other words, you're going to ascend and descend, ascend and descend, ascend and descend. Everything that goes down must go up. Everything that goes up must go down. That's why you have the Shekinah glory and the Kabod glory. You're going to live on the high and you're going to live in the low, but you're going to be in the glory of God. I will strengthen them and cause them to walk up and down in his name. Look at 32. And with the stones he built an altar in the name, the character of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar. What he, when he done what he, when he took the 12 stones, he said, I'm going to build an altar. And he said, I'm going to reestablish. I'm going to reconfirm and I'm going to rebirth the body of Christ, and I'm going to change their procreative ability. I'm going to change their nature. I'm going to change their character. No longer will they be known by a religious name. No longer will they be known by a, 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 a an identification of a church title, but they will be known as heirs and joint heirs of the kingdom of God. I 
victim vocabulary. No longer will we have the victim vocabulary. You know what an enemy is? An Gateway is open to a uh, promotion. I'm telling you, 2016 coming, my friend, coming right now tonight at midnight is the gateway to a promotion, to a uh, to acknowledgement of a revelation that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, you won't base everything upon an emotion, a shout, a hoop and a holler, a run and a dance, but you will base it upon the knowledge of knowing who God is, what God is, and the power of his might. You will not serve in the oldness of the letter, but in the newness of the Spirit. My spirit tonight, my spirit today, is heavy because we have ministry across the land. I heard a message one time by Bishop T.D. Jakes. frustrations. People look good. People act in a tinkling symbol. No power, no joy, no victory. The joy is superficial. The power is super. Is it that people that appeared to be good people frustrations were a religious base? Holy Ghost move of God where the word, all scripture, is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, foundation, foundation. You need foundation. You can't dance on air. You can't build a house on the dirt. You need foundation. They allow that foundation time to cure and settle before they build on it and drill in it. Think about it. Foundation. You need doctrine. Reproof. You're never going to know the love of God if you're not willing to be reproved and corrected. Reproof and correction. You're never going to know the love of God because he chastises those who he loves. But last and but of all, most importantly, instruction. Instruction into righteousness. How much instruction have you got in the last 30 days? Have you got a shout? Have you danced? Have you shouted? Have you screamed? How much instruction have you got? If the word doesn't do those four things, I tell people, I have a Holy Ghost regurgitation system in my body. And if the word doesn't accomplish those four things, I, it regurgitates it because something is missing. And there's a missing link tonight. There's a missing link today. And it's called, Whom do men say that I am? Why are so many people sick in the church? Why is America financially strong? It's not President Obama's fault. It stands in the key of the church. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. I don't care what the deficit is. I don't, I, I, I'm not, that's the least of my concerns. If a man be over, if he said, uh, brother, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. But he said, even as your soul prospers. Proverbs said a false balance is as an abomination to God. And we're out of balance. We need foundation. Amen. 
This is Dr. Michael Smith. You're welcome to email me. I would love your comments. I, I would absolutely love to hear from you. I love interaction. Liberty Ministry Warriors at Yahoo. Liberty Ministry Warriors at Yahoo. Or you can call me directly at 719-964-2245. Love the interaction. Tonight, go into a service, into your service on New Year's Eve, and look for foundation. Listen to the word. Get word. Let it do four things. Bring foundation, reproof, correction, and instruction to your life. And I promise you, you will grow immensely in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Sister Janet, for putting that up for me. This is Dr. Michael Smith saying, This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Don't ever forget, something good is going to happen to you. God bless you is my prayer. I love you in the love of the Lord. God bless you.